Hello, my name is Lisa Liu. I'm the Global Head of Insights at Hitwise, and for today's presentation, we'll answer what does Boohoo, Silkfred, and Farfetch have in common? So actually, they have a number of things in common. They all sell women's wear, and they're also all online players. But using Hitwise data and analytics, we've actually found a few more interesting similarities, which are particularly impressive in our current trading environment. In today's presentation, I'll answer what's binding these three brands and retailers together, as well as detail online tactics to grow your buyers. So what do I mean by tougher retail trading conditions? Fashion tends to peak at the end of the year, and we ended 2018 in a very different situation from the previous year. So looking at December 2017, like for like sales for the retail industry were up by 0.6%. And this was very much driven by the online channel, which grew in terms of non-food online sales by 7.6%. And this was also driven by an increase in online activity, also up by 7.3%. But fast forward that a year forward and looking at December 2018, as you can see with the direction of the arrows, like for like sales were down, Non-food online sales were still up, but at a slower rate. And online visits, according to Hitwise data, was also down by negative 0.7%. Looking specifically at the fashion industry, since the start of the year, it hasn't been a much easier situation as well. We can see a big decline from summer 2018, which grew around 20% plus in terms of online visits year on year. And that dropped quite drastically from November and stayed around the 4% uh, growth rate since the start of the year. And to put that number into context, this time last year, Q1 2018, that grew by plus 18% year on year. But fashion encapsulates a lot of different brands and a lot of different um, tiers as well. So what we've done here is separate those three tiers, looking at fast fashion, mid-tier and premium tiers. As you can see, there's fast fashion and mid-tier that really dropped around that November and through to the start of the year period. And even mid-tier um, saw a decline of minus 1% in November. And this is driven by several factors. There's a number of high street brands like Forever 21, like Jack Wells, um, which are struggling online and offline. And those struggles have continued throughout the year. On top of that, we've seen a number of online disruptors that exploded over summer 2018, offering incredibly cheap uh, fast fashion items like Romwe, like Dress Lily. They have seen a reversal of fortunes since the start of the year. It's only really that premium tier that's trended upwards. And again, this is driven by a handful of brands like premium women's wear, like Reese and Ted Baker, as well as high-end labels like Chanel and Louis Vuitton that continue to invest in terms of their digital. So the outlook looks pretty bleak. We've seen a big drop since November and that, that mild growth um, is consistent since the start of the year. But there are a number of fast rises and this is, this is uh, evident across the different tiers. In particular, Boohoo Group, so brands like Nasty Gal, Boohoo Man and Pretty Little Thing, they continue to grow over the first quarter, bucking the trend of fast fashion. In particular, Nasty Gal has risen by over 100% in terms of online visits in Q1 compared to the previous year. On top of that, mid-tier and premium-tier retailers like Silk, Fred and Farfetch are also seeing impressive online visit growth year on year. Which brings me back to my original question, what do these three brands have in common? They're obviously, the, as you could see in the previous slide, they're the fastest rises amongst their own tiers. But looking at Hitwise data, they also have common uh, success factors as well. First one being, they're attracting new audiences. Looking at Q1 period, the number of unique users all rose by 20% uh, compared to the previous year. And this growth isn't necessarily driven by their traditional segments. So it's understandable like brands like Nasty Girl and Silk Fred, they're attracting a higher share of 18 to 24 year old females. But when we look at 
year-on-year -year growth, they're seeing a rise among older segments too. Secondly, these sites are also very content rich and, mo and this content is also mobile optimized. Looking at Q1 year on year, mobile rates across these three sites rose by over 10%. And this is driven by different tactics across Farfetch through to Nasty Girl. So for instance, Farfetch, they're collaborating more with celebrity influencers in the high end promoting their own content. Nasty Girl and Silk Fred, on the other hand, they're using more community led content to up that mobile rate. And thirdly, search. Search is used in quite a clever way and it's still their dominant channel. They're using search to rank high organically on quick trending terms like Codigans, as well as upping their paid search on branded terms, for instance, Farfetch, like Balenciaga trainers. The commonality across these brands and retailers is that online analytics and new audiences is helping drive growth in an industry that is seeing some struggling times. Which brings me on to my next slide around Hitwise and how we support fashion brands and retailers. We've been understanding the digital consumer for over 20 years as an online intelligence provider. And at Hitwise, we offer a range of services that include measurement, i.e. competitive intelligence, discovery, so consumer insights, optimization of different digital marketing channels, as well as campaign lifts, so campaign performance analytics. We have a range of fashion uh, brands that are clients, fashion brands and fashion retailers from the fast budget end right through to the premium luxury end. And essentially what we help our clients do is find and acquire new audiences, convert browsers into buyers, i.e. increase their online conversions and also grow loyalty among existing customers. So the, the remainder of my presentation, I'll walk through some of those key recommendations that we provide to our retail clients. First one being quite simple, make fast moving search your staple. Closely monitor fast moving search terms and where these searches also lead to. And one of the prime examples of this was the cycling shorts phenomena in summer 2018, a not so flattering fashion item uh, that was made famous over 30, 40 years ago. Last year saw these shorts re-emerge with a handful of forward thinking brands turning this explosive trend into a profit making machine. Looking at searches over summer, searches for cycling shorts were up 23% year on year and it really peaked over that time that celebrity influencers like Kim K and Rita Ora Aura started donning these items. Where these searches led to had also incredibly shifted year on year too. So in summer 2017, the top recipients were uh, naturally cycling, cycling and sports brands like Wiggle, Evan Cycles and Road, as well as Amazon and eBay. Fast forward to summer 2018, Amazon still ranks on top, but we can see that a number of fast fashion brands like Pretty Little Thing, Boohoo and H&M rounding out the top five. So the key learning here is that these brands were quick on the trend, with search being such a great indicator to be able to identify fast moving terms and fast moving interests. These brands were also quick at responding with new merchandise at speed. Fun fact, Boohoo actually accredited their 50% jump in uh, profits over summer last year to the coveted cycling shorts. Our second recommendation is around identifying product trends and a great source as well to do this is by looking within uh, retailer sites. This example is looking at Feel Unique, so uh, one of the leading beauty retailers and looking at some of the fastest growing brands within that retailer site. So last year, over the month of July, three brands saw incredible growth compared to the previous month. This included NYX, Bare Minerals and Clinique. Zooming one level deeper, we can identify which products are driving that growth in the month of July. We can see that actually a number of different matte lipsticks from NYX, 
as well as foundations and blemish balms from Bare Minerals and Clinique were among the fastest rising products that grew over 300% compared to the previous month. So by understanding what are the trending products, what are the trending brands, a competitor retailer or a competitor brand could use this information uh, in several ways. For instance, featuring like for like products or like for like brands to capture that growing trend. Continuing the theme of retailer versus brand, our third recommendation is mapping out and understanding who you're attracting direct and who you're attracting indirectly. So let's look at an example for Adidas. Over the period of October to December, Adidas attracted over 600,000 people who bought directly on their site. A further 45,000 people uh, bought Adidas products on Foot Locker's site and a further 43,000 people bought Adidas products on Nordstrom's site. So this is quite great if Adidas were looking to expand their reach as well. But let's say Adidas wanted to consolidate and they wanted to migrate those indirect customers direct. An overlap analysis would show that actually Foot Locker's Adidas buyers at 59% were also visiting Adidas's direct site. To a lesser extent, Nordstrom's Adidas buyers at 36% were also visiting Adidas's site as well. So in other words, Adidas is quite a big risk and overlap with Foot Locker. A way to understand why is by looking at and analyzing the different behaviors or the different profiles of Adidas's direct buyer versus their Foot Locker Adidas buyer. So understanding what are the products that they're searching for, what are they purchasing, um, in order to bring them more direct. And speaking about buyers, our final recommendation is really understanding what makes your high value customers unique. Walking through another simple example of a Zara visitor compared to a Zara buyer. Um, looking at what are they searching for, where else are they browsing, and also where else are they buying online. Through this data, we can see that a Zara buyer, they were more likely to search for trending items like velvet purses and leather boots. They were also browsing on other fast fashion sites like Another Stories, but aspirational to looking at um, fashion items on matches fashion. Where else are they buying? They're buying on direct competitors like H&M and ASOS. Again, Zara can use this information to firstly make sure that they're stocking these types of items that are uh, top of mind and trending for their Zara buyer. They can also understand what brands are in their consideration set and why to further migrate and to further grow their buyers. So in summary, in terms of online trends, Fashion activity online is slowing down, as we saw with the decline, declining growth of fast fashion and the mid tier. It's only really that premium tier as a whole has grown since January. But there are a number of pure players that are leading growth. These include the Boohoo Group, Silk Fred and Farfetch that are gaining new audiences. And this is very much driven by their mobile optimized content, very content rich, and also their clever search tactics. We then moved on to some of the key recommendations that we provide to our retail fashion clients. These include making fast moving search your staple. So be as close as possible to the trend and respond in a timely manner, as we saw with the cycling shorts phenomena. Understand what's happening within retailers. So identifying trending brands and trending products to, to capture that growing audience. And finally, Identify what makes your buyers unique. As we saw with Adidas, map out your direct versus indirect buyers and also get to know the digital behaviors of your buyers, like what we saw in the Zara example, to further grow them. Thank you very much.